know the true joy and the life that Christ wishes to share with me. What should we do? That question is posed in our gospel to John the Baptist. We pick up in the gospel of St. Luke where we left off last week. John has come, he is preaching this baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. He's challenging the people for their complacency, their failure to live in accordance with the covenant that God has established with them. And he's attracted quite a following. And so he answers the question that's posed. He tells them to treat one another with genuine love and respect to the crowds. Generally, he tells them to be generous, sharing with all what they have to the tax collectors who are known for their exorbitant charging of an excess. He tells them not to do that. To the soldiers, he says, stop engaging in extorting the people demanding bribes. And so this message of conversion is the same message that is given to you and to me. All of us are called to be holy. The church, which constantly proclaims the message of Christ, tells us of this deepest joy and happiness that he has come to bring. It's the question that all of humanity poses. What should we do? How can we be fulfilled? How can we be happy? And the answer, of course, is to love. To love God with our whole mind, heart, soul, and strength, and then to love our neighbor as ourself. And yet so often we fail in this most basic undertaking because of our weakness of original sin. We want things our way. We're selfish and self-centered. We think that we can achieve some joy in refuting and repudiating God's plan for us. And of course, we end up wallowing in sadness and in sin. But again, this is a timeless condition. The first reading, the prophet Zephaniah, is writing about that situation in his time. We think he's writing about the year 630 BC. He's writing to the southern kingdom of Judah. They're enjoying a time of relative peace, peace and prosperity. But Zephaniah observes that they too are failing to live out the covenant in its fullness. And so he speaks what all the prophets speak, that if you fail to do that, there will be calamity that will come upon you individually and as a society. And of course, that devastation comes in 587 with the destruction of Jerusalem and the people are sent into exile. But he quickly turns from that devastation that is to come. That's what he's referring to before today's gospel. Now we're in chapter three. And he says that God will save all of us from that devastation. And so the people to whom he writes are to be glad and exalt with all their heart, for God will renew them in his love. What comforting words these would have been to those people, and what comforting words they are meant to be for all of us. Because again, when we fail to live out the call that God gives to us, it will lead to a personal loss and a lack. But we can then hear that message, that there is reconciliation offered to us in Christ. So here, I think, is this two-part answer to this question that we pose today. What should we do? First, we are called not to sin, to follow God's commandment, to love Him and to love one another for it is only there that we can know true and lasting joy and happiness. But then there is a second part, and it's of equal or arguably even greater importance that we are to remember and focus on and meditate, particularly as we have begun this year of mercy, that when we fail to love and we fall into sin, we are not to despair. We are to rely upon the only reality that gives us the hope of eternal happiness in heaven, and that is the infinite mercy of God. That is to come to Him in the sacrament of penance and reconciliation so that we might receive the fullness of His mercy, the healing, the reconciliation, and the peace that He alone can give. St. Paul then summarizes in our second reading, in a sense, what will happen if we do these two things. 
if we strive to love God and love one another, but then when we fail to seek his mercy, we will then live in the way that this Gaudete Sunday calls us to live, rejoicing in the Lord always, having no anxiety at all, giving thanks in everything so that the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will be ours. <laughs> we all want this, don't we? And so we thank God for the gift of our faith which discloses to us how we can achieve it or to put it more correctly, how God in his mercy and his grace can achieve it in us.